Hello and welcome to the video. Within this guide we will be looking at recipe conversion and adjustments made easy. These are essential areas to know about so that you can plan and then brew beer for the best results. This guide looks at three key areas. Firstly at total conversion so that your ingredients are baked into a shared recipe to make it accurate. Then we will be looking at changing the ABV to suit your taste but also ensuring that the balance of the recipe is kept. Then finally how to scale a recipe volume again to suit your taste and needs. So let's get started. Let's start with recipe conversion. When you get a recipe from someone else, quite often you will find that you will not be able to source exactly the same ingredients. Different ingredients mean a different end result, so let's look at how we can make an effective conversion. Firstly, I suggest that you make a duplicate of the recipe in its original form before you start making changes, so that you have something to compare side by side to, or refer to if the original is needed. I also find it useful to make a quick side note of key information like the predicted ABV and EBC which are shown at the top right hand side of the screen within this nice visual representation. These cover the grain side at least which is what we will start with now. You can see in this example recipe that our main base malt is Rice Otter from Muntins. If we click into this then this window will then appear. Within this section is some very useful information including the potential SG, which in this case is 1.038. This is the contribution you can expect from this malt gravity wise, which is also known as the yield. If we now look for potential replacements using the top search box we will get a nice long list. The malt shown in green here is our current selection which is handy to have on the screen at the same time as everything else. You can also see close to the top of this selection that there are three variants from Crisp that have the exact same yield as our malt. So by selecting one of these you can usually make a straight swap, but let's select one where you will need correction. The Paul's Malt Morris Otter at the bottom of the list here is a good example as the yield is lower. So now we just click on this replacement malt and then save it. Paul's malt is now our base malt, good for Paul and hopefully good for us too. You will now note though that our predicted ABV has changed down to 4.3% from 4.6 and this just will not do. To correct this we will need to use a little bit more grain but the easy way is to input the OG we want via this box, which in this case is 1.0454. As you can now see we are back at 4.6% estimated ABV and the grain bill has risen by a small amount to achieve this. If you are not sure what you need to enter here then you can refer to the original recipe but with some experience you will simply know the answer anyway. If not then it's simply a case of tweaking the number for a few moments. When we began this recipe had an EBC of 10 which is a rating for colour. After our adjustment it is almost the same at 10.2 because the whole grain bill is adjusted with this method, but if it wasn't then we could look at tweaking the caramel malt in this example either up or down depending on what we need. Now when you do this with malts like this you might notice the potential FG also move, but as long as it's a small move like we saw with the EBC in this example then I would not worry so much. Do keep in mind that this is simply prediction based on multiple variables, so we do not need to try to be super accurate here. Small differences like these are nothing that will go noticed in the resulting beer. The very next area to look at is our hops. It is extremely unlikely that hops that you obtain will be the same alpha acid percentage as those that are used within the recipe you are following. If you do not adjust these then it can simply ruin the end beer. This is due to the fact that beer recipe design is all about the balance between alcohol and bitterness. If you have an imbalance then the beer can either taste too bitter or not bitter enough for the style. The very first top we have in this example recipe is Challenger, which as you can see has an alpha acid percentage of 7% and in this recipe an IBU score of 28.1. This is the bitterness level prediction. If your Challenger hops have an alpha acid percentage of say 8% then you will not need to use as many hops for the recipe and the difference is large enough to need an adjustment. Once again click into the entry on the recipe to adjust it. At the top left of the edit box we can see the current IBU of 28 which will change as we make changes. Under the alpha acid percentage we had 7 which will now change to 8%. You will now note that the IBU has now changed to 32.1 from 28.1. If we leave it like this then the end beer will certainly be too bitter. If we now tweak the amount section to 26 grams this now shows 28.8 IBU which is still a bit too high. 
but tweaking down to 25 grams is certainly close enough at 27.7 IBU. Chances are though that even at 28.8 IBU you would not notice a difference, but at 32 most people certainly would, and had this recipe not been adjusted then this would impact the end result negatively from the recipe writer's intention. There is a handy feature built into Brewfarver that can make these adjustments for you quickly. This can be found at the top right hand side of the edit hop window as shown here. Selecting this feature will bring up this box where you can enter your actual hops alpha acid percentage and Brewfarver will scale the hop amount automatically for you. The next area of consideration for change is around yeast. You will note that the example yeast shown here is Lodemann's Fosk Fake. The 77% figure next to it is what is known as the attenuation rate, which is the yeast's ability to eat fermentables shown as a percentage. Most yeast strains will attenuate at a range of between 65-80% to 80 and for use in a beer recipe calculator only one percentage level can be selected. Do understand that this is another area which is a variable and the same yeast could attenuate at different levels even if it is fed the same recipe and conditions. However, it is a worthwhile area to dial in your recipe to if you change the yeast type. For example, you may decide to use a different attenuating yeast for whatever reason for a given recipe. Let's change this recipe to Fermentis US05 by clicking on the current yeast and then searching and selecting the substitute as we did in the other sections. As you can see, US05 has a predicted attenuation rate of 81% compared to Vosk Fake 77%. Let's now look at how this changes our recipe. This is before the change, and now you can see the shift. The first effect to our recipe is that it has jumped in ABV from 4.6% to 4.9%. You will also notice that due to the extra attenuation that our FG has been reduced from 1.010 to 1.08, meaning that this beer will finish a little drier. To change the alcohol percentage back is simply a case of tweaking the grain as I showed in the starting section of this video that concerned itself with the grain bill. In terms of raising the final gravity at the recipe stage then you could add into your recipe some dextrin, mal maltodextrin or lactose. If you wish to tweak this after a fermentation then maltodextrin is a common solution. Another area that can tweak FG is to simply mash at a different temperature. By increasing the mash temperature you can raise your FG. This will simply denature one of the enzymes at various speeds depending on the temperature that you set and your mash will just produce large sugars like dextrins during starch conversion making your wort less fermentable. Not all recipe calculators will tweak your recipe in this way but thankfully Brewfarver will. Do note though that this will also have further effects. Let's increase the mash temperature now up to 70 degrees Celsius or 158 degrees Fahrenheit as an example. What you see now on screen is the same recipe at 65 degrees Celsius and now the extra mash temperature has been applied. Not only did the FG go back to 1.011, which is not bad considering we were looking for 1.010, but the ABV also dropped from 4.9 to 4.5%, which again was not a bad thing as we were looking at 4.6% ABV. I would personally consider this enough of a conversion, but two or three points away either way are not going to make much difference in reality, but of course this is merely an example. Let's now look at how we would transform a recipe into something that has a different ABV level, whilst keeping the balance of the recipe. It should be understood that keeping the balance is vital for a good end result. This applies to both raising and lowering the alcohol level. In this example I will just show the rising, but the principle is the same, both ways. The easiest way to do this is by using the handy OG button which is found on the right hand side of the fermentable section. Then you can add in the desired gravity into this box. Let's change the OG to 1.061 to get this over 6% ABV. A nice improvement, I would say. Here is the before and after of making this OG change. You may have noticed that not only did the ABV change, but also the BUGU ratio at the bottom here. In this case we went from a BUGU ratio of 0.61 to 0.40, which is a large jump back on bitterness. So once again we need to adjust our bittering hop. In this case we need 38 grams now of Challenger to restore the balance which got us back to the BUGU ratio of 0.61. Easy stuff and like I said earlier this works for raising and lowering ABV. In saying this do note that not all beer styles will suit a very different ABV. Often the very best of results can be found within the typical ABV levels for each style which can actually be viewed in Brewfarver. But do not let this stop you from experimenting of course. For many the experimental side of homebrewing is where the best fun is to be had. And finally let's now look at volume scaling. 
If we wish to change the recipe's volume, then we can do this with this handy scale button, which is found within the equipment section in Brewfather. This is becoming more and more useful as brewing systems are available in a variety of different sizes. Once you click the scale button in Brewfather, it will bring up this box where you can simply enter in the volume desired and Brewfather will do the rest of the work for you. You will note that this section also allows you to change the brew house efficiency so that you can also scale to your own typical levels of efficiency. If you are just starting out then the best way to find this out is to get some brews under your belt and track back your typical numbers within Brewfather. A very typical level of brew house efficiency is 75% which is how I share all of my recipes. So there you have it, you should now be able to tweak your beer recipes like a pro. Congratulations! I do hope that you found this video useful, informative and interesting. If so, why not consider liking and subscribing? For further support you can join the channel's Facebook group and if you would like to support the channel then check out the channel's merchandise store as all profits go back into the channel. Until next time, happy brewing!